to the renewal of the pledge. Joanne, would you like to lead us in the renewal of the pledge, please? Sure. Stand. Right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the United States, the United States of America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Joanne. No problem. Moving on to action item 1.3, the adoption of the June 9th agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? There are no amendments at this time. So moved. Real. Second, Bertha. Okay. I have a motion by board member Fuentes and a second by board member Araguin to adopt the agenda as recommended. Roll call vote, Joanne. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Mrs. Haro? Yes. Mr. Rinojeda? Yes. Mrs. Sandoval? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Arigui? Yes. Just to confirm, Mr. Flores is not arrived yet. Okay. We have on a motion by board member Fuentes and a second by board member Araguin. The board, adopt, the board adopted the agenda as recommended on a 6-0 vote. Uh, item 2.0, public When uh, do we have any public comments this evening? Yes, we do. Okay. Would you like to read it? And I will start the timer as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Jessica Maestas. I am the mother of three children who attend Sycamore Hills Elementary School. My children's name are Annalise Maestas, kindergarten, Sophia Maestas, second grade, and Josiah Maestas, third grade. My husband and I purchased our house in 2001 because of the community with the dreams of raising a family similar to our upbringing. When we became pregnant with our first child, my husband and I made the decision for me to remain a stay-at-home mom and to make our children's safety and education our top priority. Since the oldest child's first day of preschool, I have been, been involved with his school and have volunteered service to help the schools as a classroom aide, a field trip chaperone, and an office aide, PTO member, and PTO president. Sycamore Hills Elementary has an incredible staff who goes beyond their means to work toward their vision of making the world a better place through education. I can't tell you of the pride that I have hearing my children sing their school song, which ends with, Sycamore Hills is the place to be. I know it goes without saying, but your decisions and actions are going to be felt physically, economically, and socially by the community you are responsible for. So I ask you to use the information and studies which support both education and safety. I believe studies are available which evaluate the risk of decreased social interaction, decreased exercise, decreased interpersonal communication, increased education, increase distant learning and decrease communication, which impact the vision and goals of education. We are an educated family who have earned high school associates, bachelor's and master's degree and understand the impacts of environment on the learning experience. So much so that we have chosen to keep our children in the public school system because the educational experience outweighs the educational content. I would like to request the risk analysis weighing out the risk of illness versus learning loss based on decreased social interaction, decreased exercise, decreased interpersonal communication, increased learning, and decreased communication. Superintendent Miranda and board, I know these are trying times which may or may not call for drastic measures. measures. Please do not disregard the decades of research dedicated to the art of teaching. My family and I are praying for each of you to have wisdom and peace in your decisions, recommendations, and overall leadership. You are leading the direction of our schools and in many regards, the families of the children who attend school in your area of responsibility. Please be a leader of children, not a follower of men. Thank you, Jessica Maestas. Okay. Thank you, Joanne. Do we have any others? No, that was all. Okay. Moving on to 3.0, our eval the evaluation, our board self-evaluation. Dr. Miranda. 
Yes, uh, thank you, board president, uh, board members. Uh, and just wanted uh, to, uh, first of all, thank all of you for uh, your leadership during uh, these, uh, I'll say turbulent times. And, um, just, uh, you know, uh, we've been uh, going through, through this for the last uh, three, three to four months. It feels like a long, longer now, but three months uh, and uh, hopefully soon uh, we, we will get through this. And uh, so uh, before I introduce Dr. Baker and let him take over and facilitate, uh, of course, uh, the board's uh, annual self-evaluation is uh, a process that the board takes uh, on an annual basis. And, uh, and this year, uh, it, as the board uh, provided uh, direction and guidance and uh, uh, allowed us to uh, contract with Dr. Baker, who, as you know, uh, works for the uh, San Bernardino County Schools uh, and uh, took uh, the board through this uh, process, this self-reflection -re process and, and, and really a growth uh, opportunity uh, and a learning opportunity for me as your superintendent. So I just wanted to uh, thank the board for uh, you know the, the the going through the process and and again your leadership and I got through the document I'm sure all of you have and I just uh, wanted uh, to say that and and just thank you uh, and turn it over to uh, Dr. Baker who will be leading us through the uh, the uh, reflection and the summary and and uh, lead us through the discussion so. Uh, Dr. Baker, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you for being with us tonight, virtually. Uh, did not expect you to be this way, but uh, we've had a couple of conversations uh, regarding this and Joanne, so uh, definitely probably a different experience for you. And uh, this is the first time I go through the super test. This is totally, totally brand new. So I'll turn it over to you, uh, Dr. Baker, and um, welcome. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Miranda. When I was talking to Dr. Miranda the other day, I told him he probably felt like he's worked for 10 years in the past what, six months you've been on the job. It's just, a, it's amazing. I would like to thank the entire board. Everybody completed their survey. And I must say, I was really impressed with your results. Um, before we get started, do any of you have any comments or questions regarding the evaluation or anything that you paid particular attention to? No. Yeah, hearing none, yeah, let's let's move on. Uh, what I'd like to do is move to page five of the analysis and report as we get down to the or the recommendations. And I think any, as we go through this, if I spur your memory on something that you completed, feel free to stop me and let's make sure we cover it as we go along. Now, again, your, your ratings are very high. You didn't have any ratings below 3.0. And usually we will have some ratings below 3.0. So the very first assumption I had as a board, you tend to be very cohesive as a board. And I think I started with your highest rated area, number one, your board meetings, which is a rating of 3.8. And I start with that because when you think of it, your board meetings are the cornerstone of an effective district. That's the time where you as a board get together and make the decisions, the policy decisions to move your district forward. So that being the cornerstone, being the most important, as I look through this, what I tended to spot is not something that's a problem. I don't even know if it's an issue, but I wanna say that when we look at the board superintendent authority in making decisions, it is the number one issue in America for a cause for superintendent turnover. So it does give us pause for concern to always think of it and make sure that as the board and superintendent performing our functions at the highest possible level. Now, so what I mean by that is you have to question your role. 
as a board member, the role of a superintendent. And the first question from the board is, are your decisions big picture decisions? So when you look at it from the district, are you making decisions that are based on what is best interest of the entire district, the best interest of all your students, versus are we getting involved in operational detail of how something is being done? And there's a role for that. And I, I pause here because I want to say this is more of a question <clears throat> that I would ask you to think about, you know, as a board and as a superintendent, because the clearer you are in this one area, the more time you spend in this area, the more it will improve your educational program as well as your operational program. This is the area where Superintendents are not in the politics of the board to represent their community. We really need that input. But this is an area when the political influences from staff who want to influence a decision, from community members who want to influence a decision, I know how they can harangue, harass board members to make the superintendent do something that really isn't a board member role, it's the superintendent's role. I don't know if I'm making that clear, but I say it again more as a question, that as a board you want to ask yourself, do you have a big decision to make, or are we getting down into the nitty gritty of what the superintendent's job is, which is to run the district? Now your role in that area is pretty clear. You monitor, you advise the superintendent and the superintendent always needs the advice of the board because you hold the political key to your community. You know what the community is thinking. So as a superintendent is operationally running a district, he needs to hear from a board to say, well, you know, you need to pay particular attention to this or that. Now, let me give you probably the best example I ever came up with as a superintendent. I was getting ready to name one of our principals as an assistant suit for personnel. It was on the board agenda. The day of the agenda, a board member came in to me and said, if you recommend her for that job, my next motion will be to fire you. Now, it was on the agenda, it's published, it's ready to go. And seeing how she was only one person representing one vote, you know, I said, look, my recommendation is coming, so you better make your motion to fire me because that's I'm standing by my decision. And she was running a bluff. She didn't have her other votes. But that's overstepping her bounds. Now, it had to do with internal politics. One of my other assistant suits did not like this person. And so she was putting influence on this board member. So with that, we spent time between the board and superintendent to say, look, ladies and gentlemen, I have the authority to recommend people. What I need from you in advance is to tell me any things you want me to pay attention to, any comments or concerns you have on personnel. I need to know that. And so we got that one clear. That was, I think, my second year as superintendent. That's the type of issue that can come up where what I'm saying is you need time as a board to talk through those things so that you can run a more efficient district. So it's not a problem. I'm not pointing out a problem. I'm simply saying the more you really analyze what is the board authority <clears throat> to make a decision, what is the superintendent's authority to make a decision, the more efficient you'll be. Does anybody, do you have any questions or comments about that statement? Dr. Baker, I do I do want to make a comment. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, just want you know as you you talk about that. Oh, I guess I'm done. <laughs> that, that was a short comment. Uh, no. So what? Uh, just reflecting on that as a new superintendent and uh, you know starting uh, January first. Uh, uh, this uh, last six months, I've just uh, the the board of education. Uh, Starting with the, the leader board of uh, president uh, Pat uh, Haro and 
understand uh, have provided uh, so much guidance for me and helped me see the bigger picture over the last uh, uh, five, six months and the job. And I really appreciate the conversation I've had with each board member about the direction uh, of the district approving. Uh, it started with the entry plan, uh, giving me uh, the go ahead on that. And then uh, transitioning as we transition to the LCAP, uh, the LA, uh, LEA plan. And so, anyways, I just wanted to reinforce that because the board gave themselves a high mark in that area, and uh, and I and I just wanted to uh, affirm that that the the board, our board, uh, it, it consistently supports uh, not only me as the superintendent but also the cabinet and what we're doing and uh so we really appreciate that as a cabinet uh and uh we understand that the board is the what and this the the soup uh and the and his staff is the the how we know the why because that's the best thing for kids but anyways so i just wanted to affirm that um and just reinforce that thank you dr baker yeah and i'm glad you uh added that input because I can't speak highly enough about that. If you are, are right on the what, that superintendent really does depend on your advice and counsel. I'll give you another example. We had a principal that failed miserably. And I was talking to the board president about, I really blew it on that decision. And she gave me good counsel. She goes, think back on it. You made the best decision with the candidate pool you had. And I reflected on, yeah, you're right. But that's, that's what a good coach does. A good coach gives you strokes and sometimes when you need it, a kick in the behind to say, hey, come on, wake up here. And that's the, the role of the board. And, and so with it, I would like to comment about what Frank talked about. All of you talk about being here for the number one reason, the best interest for students. That is, is critical and I admire the heck out of you for having that belief and voicing that belief. Now, as we move on, as we look at the uh, bottom of that recommendation, the one thing as a board you want to consider when you have action items, especially your major action items, you want the superintendent to present to you the pros and the cons of the decision and the reason why he's making his recommendation. That's a, a requirement. What that does, it should give you all this thinking as to why and how he made a decision. It should answer all your questions. What this does is allows you the time at board meetings to think through big policy decisions. And we'll get into this a little bit later in this report. Now, as you look at the second area, your board in service category number five, the rating was 3.4. That's still an outstanding rating. But I would recommend something you guys have talked about. That's a board development calendar. It is important, I think, as a board and superintendent, you have a, a planning calendar to always work on your skill and knowledge. Number one of every employee in your district, every board member intended, is that skill and knowledge. The greater your collective skill and knowledge is, the better your district. So there's a whole ton of issues as a board member you have to be involved with in skill and knowledge when you think of all the different decisions that the superintendent needs to bring to you. That's just an endless list. So the more you're on top of the those issues right now, whether it's the like the parents who just got the information you have on COVID-19, which by the way, I was read an article that in Southern California there's a, a pediatrician group, 1,500 pediatricians signed on to saying 
They want to put kids back in school because they feel there's more harm keeping them out of school than putting them back into school. So that's part of the evidence and part of the discussion at board meetings that you need to be analyzing because this will be a big decision. The other one is uh, the menu. Do you have a menu of offerings? Some parents want to go back to school, some parents don't, some parents want to go back part time. And our ability to have a menu of services for parents that fits all their needs is it is it possible? Pretty much so. We're going to be going through many types of questions and concerns by parents. I can give you one. We have a, a new granddaughter, a year old. And right before this meeting, I was talking to my son, and he was saying, "Dad, you know, she was sick a while ago." And he goes, "The last thing I want her to have is." You know, this COVID-19 virus, I go, I understand that. So that's a concern, a real concern for parents, especially new parents. They have a little uh, kindergarten student, very frustrating for them, and, and they're going to rely on your cooler heads to prevail. A one size fits all solution just doesn't work. But as you go on to the uh, your board development program, I would strongly encourage you to set a calendar to look through how to improve your skill and knowledge. And this is a time of uh, budget cuts, perhaps. So you look for the most cost effective. So as a board, you certainly want your parameters for always and never. Uh, so you always want to look this year at cost effectiveness. And what I found the most cost effective program was to ask your administration or even the board if you know of another district that's like your district that is doing something that you think is impressive, you want to uh, invite them, arrange a meeting, a tour, so that you can go get knowledge of what they're doing. You do something else during that trip, you make a connection with other board members. The other things which we have, which I highly recommend, the San Bernardino County School Board Association they have a series of about four meetings throughout the year that are very low cost. That's an excellent one. You also have the CSBA annual conference, the NSBA annual conference, and one that I think we tend to forget, it's CASBO. That's the California you know, Association of School Business Officials. I found they run some very excellent conferences, especially on the operational side of the uh, organization, which is good information for school boards. But I would say this is uh, something that you as a board, you'd want to take time in the board meeting to talk through. And you may have already heard something before, but I've always found you know, if you go to a conference and you learn just one new thing, it's worth it. I had a board member challenge me because we did a lot of staff development. We did a lot of sending people a lot of places. And he wanted to know what's been the value to our district. So we pulled up every uh, teacher, every classified, every manager, workshop, conference they went to. And the overwhelming majority of programs and, and practices that we put in the district came from our people going outside of the district and bringing the information back. So for us, and that was the role of the board, the monitor, you know, put to proof what you're doing. I had another one I recommended buying three new cars for the district. And I always said every decision will benefit students. So one of my board members said, you proved to me, how's that benefiting students? And I said, well, we send a lot of teachers down to the county for staff development and they have to go down to Cajon Pass. And I said, my biggest concern is sending a first year teacher that doesn't have a newer car down that hill and breaking down and getting them in a tough, tough spot. So I think you know, it's worthwhile to our students' education to make sure their skill and knowledge is up to speed and those new cars are gonna get them there and back safely. And he said, okay, because I buy that explanation. So that's the tough questions by the board is just that. They, they have to be tough. We have to be able to address any concerns and when you monitor and you evaluate what we're doing, that's the role of the board. Do any of you have any other thoughts on workshops or conferences that you could go to?
This is, uh, this is Dan. I don't know if this is Dan. Sure. Um, one of the things that I appreciate, and this, this is really from early on, I'm in my eighth year on the board, but I recall when I first got elected in November in 2012, um, I was immediately invited to go to CSBA, which is in December, so just a few weeks out. Um, I hadn't even been sworn in yet, and it was almost an expectation. And I mean that in a positive way, saying, hey, this is what we do. We really want to get you involved. We want to get you um, engaged. We want to send you to the conference. We get to meet the board. I hadn't met many of the other. Well, I knew many of the board members, but I hadn't spent a lot of time with them. And in that culture of allowing board members to participate in professional development, where we not only learn uh, new things, whether it's technical or professional, but get to spend time together, begin to understand each other's values, where we're coming from, perspectives. That time away from the board meetings makes it so much easier that when we get together in tough meetings to make decisions, um, a lot of times we know where, where each other's coming from because we spent time together and we, we share stories and backgrounds and it's it's time well spent and it makes for a much more efficient and productive board. I've always found. I wholeheartedly agree, and I know we came up with little practices over the years at CSBA and NSBA that for the general sessions, we always sat in the right front. So no matter how big the audience was, we knew where we were going to be, and we would show up, and it was just good being together and going out and have dinner together and mixing and mingling with other school board members and picking their brain on what they're doing. It just, I can't... Uh, I can't vouch for that enough. And I agree with Dan as far as um, I know that CSBA, I, most of us attend CSBA. And I think it's very important that we attend because in education, um, you can never not have enough knowledge. And education is changing always. And so by going every year, I think it. Well, Pat, can you guys still hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Pat cut out? Yeah, Pat, doc, uh, Pat cut off. Okay. You know, uh, while she gets on, I'll just mention another one that uh, we always invite our board, which uh, you mentioned the financial, uh, you mentioned CASBO, School Service of California, the budget workshops. But go ahead, Pat. I was trying to fill some time there. <laughs> yeah, your backpack. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but um, and I think it's also important the fact that we meet other board members from um from other districts because uh, those connections are valuable. No one understands what a board member goes through other than another board member. And we can learn from each other because everybody does things differently and, and we can get ideas on what could possibly work. So I, I think those um, those types of things are so important for us, for us to learn personally, but also for us to grow. So. Yes, and you, you never apologize for that. You know, there, are, there are people, constituents out there who will say, yeah, you go to these lavish conferences and workshops, well, that's the strength of the district. The only, my only caveat, I had a board member from another district, great guy. If they came out with a board policy decision, there'd be no travel outside the state. And we happened to be on a plane ride to Sacramento and we were talking about that. He asked me, what do you think about it? And I go, well, I go, do you realize right now it's cheaper to fly to Phoenix than it is to Sacramento. This is out of Ontario. And I go, how do you feel about denying your, your educators? There's an outstanding conference called the Effective Schools Conference. And I said, that's, I just don't understand your logic. But it's okay, that's a good point. I go, if I have the money and people want to go there, I'd want to send staff to Finland where they're supposed to have an outstanding educational program. I'd like them to go see firsthand, bring some of that back. My philosophy was, you know, anywhere, anytime, just I want to get you there, bring it back, make us better. And it's always dependent on being cost effective. If you don't have the money, we just don't do it. Dr. Baker, another thing that's really helped me is the Master in Governance uh, workshops. 
supposed to go to my fifth one, but because of it, I wasn't able to. But that, uh, you know, the, the, the different uh, perspective of uh, being a board member. So mastering governance is something really cool. Uh, the COVID con conference. Yeah. The Haku also is one that was uh, very, very informative. Uh, what's, what's the Haku? Like you said, I, CSBA, the one, the annual CSBA, that's, I went to the first one last year and that was so informative and uh, was able to meet other board members and it does make a difference in the way we work together as a, as a team. Yeah, those personal relationships and connections are important. Is somebody trying to check in? Mm -hmm. Dr. Baker, his, uh, Haku is the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities. Oh, very good. Yeah, yeah. I think the uh, we have just a ton of different conferences out there, so that's why you know I encourage the board discussion. You know, you look at what's your focus, who has some of the answers on the focus, what you're what you're looking for. And you look for what's the most cost-effective way to get the information, and but always spending some time out and about. And the other one that I always say, I had a group of three brand new teachers. They went up to San Francisco, and when they got back, I said, "Okay, you know, what did you think of San Francisco?" And they go, "Well, we just, you know, went to the conference." And I said, "I hope you didn't eat in a little fast food restaurant. I think it's on." Union Square or something. Uh, and they go, well, yeah, we did. And I go, oh my gosh. I said, part of your education when you go somewhere is to learn about that community. It brings some information back. You know, you missed out on Alcatraz. You missed the Golden Gate Bridge. They missed out all these things. Uh, so part of I thought my job as superintendent was to expand the horizons of staff. They don't, uh, I think the worst thing I used to hear from somebody when some student would ask them for some money and they'd go, I'm just a teacher, I can't afford a dollar. You know, and I'd, I'd always say, are you kidding me? The local gang leader will say, I'll give you a hundred bucks to stand on the corner and flash me signs when the police are coming and you're saying you can't even afford a dollar. Why should they ever want to be a teacher? That just doesn't make sense to me. You know, it's different to say, nope, that's my dollar and you need to earn your own. But to say you can't afford it, that's the wrong message from a teacher. Anyway, that's just, my two cents. <clears throat> the other one that you had, the um, your board qualities, you had a rating of 3.6. You know, it had to do with the, I'd say education questions. And that's, that's a good one. I think it was your newest board member about the educational process. She's still new to the game. And again, this takes uh, time for discussion. One way to break it down is to look at each department. When you look at the education part of it, it can be pretty overwhelming. Having staff present a clear picture of how curriculum becomes curriculum, the role of the state superintendent of public instruction versus the governor, the, uh, the legislature, and how we can impact and influence that. So that can take time, sometimes years of training just to understand it and, and find out a way that you want to influence it. Uh, so that, again, it starts with the board coming up with the questions, ideally coming up with a calendar. And you can always ask uh, from staff, staff from San Bernardino County to come in and address it for you, so that would be the way you can keep expanding. And I'd say as a board, when it's at a board meeting, all of you are getting the same information. And that's the, the power of it. one board member isn't hearing something the other people aren't hearing. So that would, would get you up to speed as an entire board. So the probably the worrisome part is if your newest board member doesn't have information and others are moving through the uh, the agenda, it's always good to slow down and, and make sure we're all up to speed because it's that collective power of the group when you make decisions, which it seems like you do. What I'm getting from this is you do it as a, 
collective mindset, I think is outstanding. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Baker, if I can, if I can comment, just uh, affirm. Let me first of all say that the the board uh, that we have is uh, is a very smart board. They have some really great questions, uh, tough questions at times. But we we try to do as a captain as staff is uh, front load the board. Uh, we understand not everybody has an educational background. We have. Uh, but uh, they're, they're, the strength of this court is the different uh, divergent uh, views. And, and, um, and uh, so we, what we tend to do is, uh, as a cabinet, what I do is uh, before any marketing, any agenda, uh, I go through is check in. We, we send in a lot of information, we provide a lot of information to the board uh, via more correspondence information on these presentations and then I check in and and have one on one with the board on before the meetings to try to answer questions issues and, and we don't get it you know it's it's a lot of information but I my point being is that um, I, I just want to commend the board for the questions they they ask uh, because when we get to our board meetings uh, I think our captain and Steph again uh, does a, a good job of answering the board's questions and answering the why, and not assume that just because we're the educational experts, so-called, uh, we are. But that's why we're in this positions that it's uh, it's okay. So, I hope that makes sense. I, I kind of hear feedback, but I hope that was clear. But uh, I just I just wanted to commend the board on asking really good questions. Uh, yeah, please keep that up. It keeps us uh, keeps us on uh, on our toes, and not only that, but it makes us as a staff really understand what that we're uh, implementing. The education that we're doing is uh, is the right thing for kids, and uh, so hope that makes a little bit of sense there, Dr. Baker. I'll turn it back to you. To, uh, clarify again, the more from the staff side. When they give a recommendation, and this is it's a style where they give these are the pros, these are the cons of this decision, and this is why I'm making this recommendation. The more you have that dialogue where your superintendent and staff, they know the, the parameters, the always and nevers of making a decision. And we always want it to be in the best interest of students. So say that. Why is this in the best interest of students? Uh, we always want to be cost effective. How is this cost effective? So when you have all that information up front prior to a board meeting and you have all your questions answered, you do not have to spend valuable time at a board meeting addressing it. That's when you can move on to the agenda of some of these staff reports and the educational issues that you as a board want to hear about. <clears throat> That's where you're going to spend your time. It's more valuable spent there. The other one which came up that I saw was the talking about having a network with your community leaders. And you have different community leaders. You have the informal leaders, the non-elected people who you all listen to, and they represent different constituent groups. Then you have your elected leaders. So that's just a discussion. Who do you want to focus on? And you probably have information to your other board members of what's the best way to communicate with an elected official. What I've always found is we need to do that over time. And we need to be complementing things we like that they do prior to coming to them with a complaint or a need. The elected officials are there to, to serve and they, and they love helping people out. And do we have the kind of the network in place prior to coming and asking them for help? Dan, can you uh, add add any information along those lines? Again, the microphone is on mute. 
Anyway, do you have any guys have any thoughts on that? Probably the, the biggest finesse part of being a board member, of being able to have ready access to whether it's the uh, legislative aid, they usually have a person in their office that you can reach out to. And the more you have a relationship with that person where you can pick up the phone and just say, do you have any information on this item? And they go, yes, let me get it to you. They just they do a tremendous job and service getting that information to you. <clears throat> Dr. Baker, I think uh, our, our district, we have a community cabinet. I don't know if you've heard of it. And that's a big way that we network with our elected officials and our community cabinet. But also, I think each and every one of us has an elected official that we know personally. I phone numbers of people that uh, I know that are elected officials, but through the school district, we do have the community cabinet where we like I think happen th happening throughout our district. And it's been a big positive thing uh, for us. Uh, we had Superintendent Jerry Almendares, who actually started the community cabinet about five years ago. It's been very effective uh, for our district to have those people a lot of times they'll they'll reach out to us even asking us questions on you know what's going on in our district what's going on in the community and i think that network that partnership that we have with them has always been a positive thing through our community cabinet yeah it sounds outstanding do you have any any thoughts or comments or suggestions I think our bridge committee meetings too also uh, keep us in touch with our surrounding communities as well. Now, what is the bridge? Uh, our bridge committees is with uh, three board members. Um, normally, the board members who represent that area, uh, they meet about um, maybe three to four times a year with uh, city council members, like say for Colton or the Bloomington area or Grand Terrace and they discuss things that are happening with the school district and as well as then that they would uh, in turn tell us things that are happening with the city and what might impact the school district so i think that keeps us in touch as well yeah excellent idea have you ever shared that with like the san bernardino county school board association um i don't know if we have actually That's something that I think other other boards need to hear. And I guess we need to share it with them, don't we? <laughs> we do some good things in Colton. <laughs> yeah, we do. And I'm part of those meetings too, Dr. Baker, or the bridge committee. Okay. So uh, the board allows me to attend those too. That's that's great teamwork. You guys will always be in the, be in the loop. Thing is, uh, Dan Flores, uh, too, so uh, he always keeps us informed. <laughs> and, uh, and so, Dan. Well, that's a big, big asset. It is. I think for myself, more, um, more so now than ever, is that the important to be you know, in touch with uh, other leaders i think especially now especially now with all the, the different things going on um it's crucial that we do reach out to yeah no, i i agree this is probably uh, starting the year will be a, a difficult year people issues and yeah the the more you guys talk through it and come up with a, a response from the board, the better you'll be. Now, some of those, when you when you get caught in the, uh, as you go into the presidential election year, you know, I, I tell superintendents, it's, you're gonna get hit with the craziest things and you're not going to really have an answer that'll appease anybody. It's, 
they don't want to be appeased. They want to be mad. And you're going to have to be able to stand there and, and take it. Well, that goes for the, the boards as well. And but the more you represent your community in it, and you guys it sounds like are doing an excellent job, the more people will know you and support you. So in case you get some outside people coming in trying to stir things up, they won't get traction. I don't know if you've ever had to go through that, but you know, going through a, a few of them and being able to be cool, calm, and collected and not lose my temper. I certainly heard after the fact from parents and community people how much they appreciated because they knew me, they knew where I came from, but I they didn't I didn't let them get to me. And I guess that's what I'm saying to you. It should be the the measure of all of you and to keep each other, you know, in check. Uh, don't let people or situations get to you. you know, our, our students need that disciplined mind of the board and superintendent to come together and the best decisions for them. Sounds easy, but I know it's difficult. Well, this is all, all I have. Do you have any comments or questions regarding what I've presented to you? I just let me make a quick comment, uh, Ms. Uh, Ber Bertha made a great comment, and it just made me reflect that. And I know this board, uh, the board has directed me very clearly that I need to be out in the community and meeting with other soups and uh, the leaders. And I was on a roll. <laughs> Before the COVID-19, it doesn't mean, though, that I'm not meeting with other uh, superintendents and um, in uh, Orange County, LA, and here in the uh, in the Empire. Uh, I, and I just mentioned that because uh, uh, the the board has given me again the the direction and the uh, the confidence to do that. So uh, the. They're, they understand uh, that, you know, it, it can't be an island. We got to reach out to our community leaders and all that. So we got to be more creative. And, and as a superintendent, uh, I have to, you know, lead that and rep, you know, represent the board everywhere, though. Uh, so, anyways, um, yeah, so I just wanted to reinforce what uh, what Bertha said and, and affirm that because uh, I think that uh, it's so important that even during this, uh, especially during this time period, that we are reaching out as a district to other districts and other community the the, the the community leaders, and uh, I think we're doing that. Uh, I think we can, I can uh, do more, uh, definitely. So um, I just wanted to. Let uh, Bertha know that I'm listening very clearly, <laughs> loud and clear. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to you I want, go ahead, Bertha. This is Pat. I just want to say thank you to the board members for participating in the self evaluation. Um, I know we've been doing this now about five, six years, and um, uh, I'm proud of our board for doing it because I know that not all boards do a self-evaluation every year. And I know when we've talked about it before, uh, maybe casually at CSBA with other board members and, and they're surprised that we do this and that we make it public. Um, afterwards, we usually um, have something written up for uh, the upcoming board me meeting, saying something to the effect that the board has done a self-evaluation and we let the public know that we do hold ourselves accountable. And so um, I hope we'll still be able to do something like that. I know that this board has always been um, uh, congratulated for what they do as far as uh, the, uh, the way we handle ourselves and the way we handle the evaluation. So I just wanna say thank you to my colleagues. Yeah, well, well stated. I'd like to make a comment to uh, Pat. <clears throat> when I went and took the Master of uh, Boardsmanship workshops, um, 
I was really proud to be part of a board like we are. Um, not all boards function the way we do. And it's, I think the more we talk about how we work together, the better we get. Because it's uh, not all boards talk very well together or even about each other very well. And I think this really does help us become more cohesive and, and working better with each other. So uh, I'm really glad that we do this as well. I know I reflect on and I'm thinking, okay, what can we do to be more cohesive in those areas? I think when you look at the, uh, that would be on, uh, let's see, I'm trying to see the uh, page. I have the wide variance, page two at the bottom. <clears throat> and if you look at okay. that, the first one was on section one board superintendent relations. That wide variance, that was your newest member. And I think as I read through it, she could have rated it even a four. Because on the one hand, you think as a new member, maybe you're not getting many complaints. Well, then you, you are communicating everything you've heard because you haven't heard anything. And so I think she's being hard on herself. I, I don't think I would have gone there. <clears throat> the ones that you, question four, disseminates information to the public, talk about trying to improve in that area. The other one, five, maintain open dialogue with governmental and community leaders. That's the one, my recommendation, that you address that as a board. How are you doing that? So you want to look at, what is your formal structure? So you have your uh, formal structure. Is that working for you? This is the part where I say at a board meeting, you want to spend time to discuss it. As opposed to spending time going over operational issues. If that's Maybe you don't do that, but if that's where you want to look. Are we spending our agenda with a bunch of operational issues where that if you would have had the pros and cons, the reason for the recommendation, have all your questions answered before your board meeting, which frees up your time so that when you're at the board meeting, you can talk about, and you ask the question, what are we doing to improve our communication with our governmental representatives? What are we doing with our community leaders? And it starts by asking the question and then brainstorming it. That's where I would go with that, Bertha. The other one, the board quality, section four. Okay. The uh, other one about possesses knowledge of the educational process and needs of the community. That, again, was your new member. And I would agree. You want to make sure that your, your newest member has as much information as possible. And that my suggestion is, that's a place where you want your staff member to do reports. Or I'm saying, if you build in a calendar, you can talk about curricular, you can talk about, get down to subject matter. Maybe you're focusing on uh, math or science, uh, or you want to talk about the special education, bilingual education. That's where you want to have a, a staff report and it comes first from doing a survey of the board, what issues or concerns do you have that a staff could give you a report? And if you want even further assistance, again, we have San Bernardino County personnel who can also add from the county perspective what they know. Your board in service, again, at a, the uh, two to four split, the recommendation is for you to talk as a board on what you would like to do in terms of having in services where you attend as a board would be the recommendation. 
policy development cooperatively establishes policy with administration for the operation of the district. This is one of those that policy is one of those that can be very time consuming and very tedious. Are you are you part of the CSBA policy manual maintenance program? Yes, yes we are, Dr. Baker. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, the, my issue with them, I don't know if it's still like this, but when they would write their policies, that would be to kind of include a policy with the administrative regulation. In my opinion, it was all put into one huge policy statement. And that's what took the, uh, the biggest amount of work on staff time. I know when I get new cabinet members in, it took my time to train the administration, the difference between a policy statement, which is short, succinct to the point, and then the administrative regulation. And even though the administrative regulation does not need to be approved by the board, I always gave it to the board for information for them to comment and critique it. I, I needed their, their insight as a board. So I strongly suggest that. But again, clearly establishing your board identified your developmental goals. Again, your developmental goals would be if you think you need to have as a board an agenda or a plan, a calendar of which workshops you want to look at for the next year and where you as a board commit. If it's CSBA, you say, let's all try to commit to go to CSBA you know, in December. And you do that. So you know you have that one place marker and you're all gonna get that information. Those would be my recommendations on your, uh, what I call the two to four split questions. It wasn't, wasn't as bad as it might, might look. You had seven, two were from the new person. Any other thoughts and comments? <clears throat> I guess one thing I'd like to leave you with, when you look at your agenda on your school board meeting, are you building in time as a board to discuss big picture issues? That's where most of the, the work is needed in, in school districts. Again, I want to compliment you as a board. It's been a pleasure to read through your self evaluations and to watch it as you guys work together. It's a pleasure. I always rated a board, did they make me a better person? I would say, yes, as a board, you guys are probably going to make Frank a better person as a result of working with you. That's all I have. So if, there's, if there isn't anything more, my part's wrapped up. Okie dokie. Are there any comp anything else from the board? Okay. Hearing none. Um, I will see you all on Thursday for our regular board meeting, but the, it is 629 and this meeting is adjourned. Thank everybody. You, thank you, Pat. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you uh, Dr. Baker. You bet, Frank. Have a good evening, everyone. Have a good evening too. Bye bye. Thank well, you, Dr. Baker, for everything. We appreciate it. My pleasure. For all your hard work. Joanna, I'll see you at 7 30. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> <laughs> all right. Take care. Have a good evening, everybody. Bye. Have a nice evening, everyone. Bye, Joanne. Thank you. Bye bye.